And unless you are, um, you know, under a rock this evening, it was pretty bad, right? It was pretty bad. This is the first, uh, first. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. So, what are we what are we thinking? You know, what do, what do we make of today's 2.2% uh, move in the Nasdaq? Uh, all indexes had a big move. Uh, Dow. Uh, one and a half percent. Same thing was uh, S and P with the Nasdaq and the Russell putting up uh, two plus uh, percentage points in gains. Uh, very impressive, right? Right. Very, very impressive. Um, you know, at, at times years ago, I used to kind of overreact when I saw big individual moves, and years and years and years went by, and I started always looking at the big picture. So, for example, um, you know, we've had five days in a row. Of consolidating below the 50-day moving average and then we get big one one big day right we had three months of selling but in between we had some pretty big days right pretty big days so it's very very easy especially for new traders to kind of jump the gun and and start making uh emotional statements like that's it this is the bottom this is the reversal this is this this is that maybe it is maybe it isn't again we, we, our job is not to pretend we're smart on these internets okay uh, our job is to look at you know the market from uh, a realistic adult point of view and the most important thing for me and i kind of was talking about it all day throughout the webinar I, I think the most important part of today's session was where we closed right a uh, big big move in the indexes uh the dow they did great, right? The NASDAQ did great. Everything closed at the highs of the day, but we closed right underneath the 50-day moving average. And I really wanted to see a close uh, above 348, because that's where the, you see this whole 348 breakdown on uh, March the 7th. So I wanted to see the bulls reclaim 348 on the close, and they closed uh, 346. And today was the start of uh, beta earnings season, right? You had Netflix and you have uh, Tesla tomorrow. We'll get to that in a second. And you had some uh, IBM. And the most important part was how is the market going to react from uh, a Netflix earnings report? And, you know, last night, if you watched last night's video, again, I was sell bias going into today. Uh, you know, why wouldn't I? Right. Why wouldn't I? Uh, but again, I always know you always have to have some longs just because if the cells don't confirm, you could play some to the upside. Again, we'll get to the pivots uh, in a second. Some nice moves, uh, especially Tesla, Lulu, uh, and NVIDIA today. But the most important part was how were the market participants going to handle a good Netflix earnings and how are the good market participants going to handle a bad earnings? And, you know, Netflix came out uh, after the close. And unless you are, um, you know, under a rock this evening, it was pretty bad. Right, it was pretty bad. This is the first uh, first quarter in ten years that Netflix has lost uh, subscribers. Right, um, I personally love Netflix. Okay, to each his own. I know some people are disappointed by the content. I like watching the movies from years ago. I like watching all the documentaries. Um, you know, the the Netflix specials. I love the comedy specials. You know, stuff like Ozark and, and Narcos and. You know, and, you know, like rest of development and stuff like that. I love Seinfeld. I'm going through again. So I love that stuff. I'm on Netflix twice a day, especially with kids in different practices and games. Like I have a lot of time in my hands. So I'm not leaving. Right. To take a page out of the bull uh, to, out of the apes. I'm not leaving again. I don't know. I don't know what I'm paying for Netflix. Fifteen dollars, seventeen dollars, nine. I have no idea. But I really like the product. But the market has spoken and 10 percent. And this is the first time in 10 years. Uh, subscribers have softened and the stock got absolutely murdered. And we, we did notice the options market was dictating that um, there was no notable. There was one guy that came in, one guy that came in. He bought like 30 grand worth of the weekly 400 calls RIP. Uh, but it, it was mostly, you know, they were coming for the 30750 puts all day. I mean, all day today. And uh, we always joke around that um, you know somebody always knows something or they were not uncertain 
from taking a page from the Showtime series Billions, but they were not uncertain. And, you know, we talked about this in the webinar and congratulations. I know a lot of you guys are short uh, some Netflix into the earnings. It, it was very, very tough to see um, a really good quarter, a really great quarter, because, again, now that COVID restrictions are being lifted, the man, um, a mass mandate, I believe, today uh, was uh, taken out of uh, you know airplanes and stuff like that. Uh, and people going back to work. And, you know, it was very, very tough to see where the great quarter was going to come. And, you know, measured, I, I thought the stock was going to see maybe, you know, 310, 315. Stock right now is 259 uh, after hours. And this is uh, taking down Disney. Uh, this is taking down, uh, this is taking down Roku. Anything to do with streaming is being taken down. And not only that, so if you complement that with the strong move, into the close on the queues, right? If you look, you know, you have 1.6% uh, uh, weighted uh, weighted um, theory on Netflix into the NASDAQ 100. The queues are down, uh, queues are down roughly three and a half points uh, after the close. And now it's going to put, you know, it's going to put the bulls into a test tomorrow. You know, can the bulls buy this dip? I, you know, I, I think tomorrow is going to be a pretty big day because if the bulls can't buy this dip and we're still below the 50-day moving average, nothing. Well, that means nothing materialistically has happened in the market. Have, you know, did you guys enjoy a pretty good day to the upside today? Again, listen. Look, look what Tesla did. Look what you know. Look, look what uh, Lulu did. Look what Nvidia did. Again, if you look at the majority of charts, they're not great charts. They're not really good charts. Everything's still stuck in this supply. So the bulls, even without the Netflix um, earnings debacle, we'll st we're still going to have a, a really, really tough time going into tomorrow. But now the bigger question lies is, can they buy this dip? Will they buy this dip? Can they shake this off as just like, you know, a random uh, jab, a random shot to the body? Can they recover? And if the answer is yes, then yeah, if we can close tomorrow, above the 50-day moving average and reclaim this 348 level, yeah, the bulls are good to go, right? The bulls are good to go and risk will be back on above the 50-day moving average. But if they don't and they give back everything that they made today uh, because of Netflix's um, earnings report, then hey, again, it's gonna be very, very tough uh, for the bulls to get off the mat. We'll see, right? We'll see what happens. There's no way you can predict it. There's no reason to guess. It's all about price action uh, in the morning. Obviously, tomorrow, the big one is going to be uh, Tesla, right? Uh, they're coming out after earnings. Obviously, they're coming out with earnings on 420, obviously, right? But the point is, uh, from the other spectrum, we saw, we've been seeing short-term uh, call buying on the weeklies, the 1150s, the 1160s, the 1100 calls, uh, for tomorrow's earnings. We'll see. Again, we'll, we will very, very see. Um, I think the value tomorrow in Tesla is definitely any weakness, um, any weakness into the bottom of the range. So what they usually do, and I, I know a lot of these stocks do the same thing, right before earnings day, you know, they're either going to rally it or let's just pretend the other case, uh, they sell it into, what you want to do is you want to trap it into the rising support. Because if they get trapped into rising support, then there's a shot this thing goes red to green. You can really get a expanded run ahead of earnings. But if it does, because uh, right now you know Tesla's down like uh, 11 after the close, just like everything else. Uh, but I, I'd like to see. I, you know, I'd like to see the bulls get some strength. But if they if they not, obviously uh, we'll go back uh, to uh, the sell side. Um, so going into tomorrow again, there's a big big day for the bulls, big day for the bears. Uh, can the bulls? Make this more than a one day one day wonder. Can they make this more deflecting negative uh, tone for the earnings report for technology? And the bear's job is to reject them again, take down everything we made today, and back to uh, the bottom of the range. We'll see. That's the best we can say. We will see. Said the blind man. So going into tomorrow, uh, obviously I like Tesla on any dips, uh, any dips into rising support. I think that is the value play. See if the bulls get, uh, see if the bears get trapped at the bottom of the range. Um, I like this uh, ZBH. Look, look at this chart on a really nice looking chart. Uh, really, look at a tight, tight channel. I keep an eye on this thing. Uh, this thing starts basing. This thing could see 132. Uh, calm. I think they make like eggs or something like that. For some reason, I remember that. I know they don't make eggs. I know chickens make eggs, allegedly. 
But you can see it stopped at the 10 day moving average. This thing has a history when it reclaims the 10 day moving average, it's going really big runs. It stopped at the 10 day moving average. If it could reclaim the 10 day, uh, maybe this thing will wake up. Keep an eye on that. Um, and check out Moderna. Um, you know, Moderna, now that like COVID is, you know, dying out and uh, tomorrow, like I'll give you a perfect example. Like uh, we haven't gone on vacation. Oh, I have, I, let me say this much. We've been to like the Hamptons and stuff, but we haven't gone to like on, on an airplane over two years since COVID has started. Tomorrow, my wife is taking my kids. She's taking them to Miami for a week, right? I got some stuff to take uh, take care of here. So I will be home with the poodle. This is my, as much as my vacation, it is on theirs. No matter how much you love your family, no matter how much you love your wife and your husband and everything else, every man, every woman has their limits. Sometimes we need a break. So they're going on vacation, but the point is, if they were comfortable enough, if, if I was comfortable enough to, to have them go on an airplane, then you know names like Moderna uh, is not gonna have the same staying power um, as, as it was when we didn't have uh, a vaccine or we still had this uh, global lockdown pandemic. So I like this thing. This thing starts losing uh, the bottom of the channel here. I like this thing uh, to the short side as well. And NVIDIA, keep an eye on NVIDIA. They still a lot of call buying on NVIDIA. If NVIDIA bounces back with, uh, if NVIDIA bounces back with uh, the rest of technology, I, you know, I kind of like this whole range here. I want to keep an eye on this thing uh, and see if it works out. So that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's kind of a late, let's see uh, what happens for tomorrow. As you can possibly imagine, you know, 90% um, of my at least game plan uh, was to the downside. And as you can imagine, none of them confirmed to the downside because everything rallied. And this is where beta becomes really, really good. You don't need, you know, you don't need 10 of these stocks to work. You just need one really good one because the great part about beta, they're not going to go up a dollar. They're not going to go up 50 cents. They go up, they go up 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars, depending uh, how big the range is. So you had NVIDIA today, uh, 221, uh, 228 to me a big macro level needs to build. NVIDIA went to 224, not a huge move. Uh, it got stuffed a little bit at supply. Uh, Tesla was a good one. Again, you know, there was a catalyst obviously for tomorrow. They got their prices raised today at Credit Suisse. If they make a pre mark pre earnings run, might as well be today, right? No, no time than better than the present. Uh, 1015 and 1026 last week's highs needs to confirm for a 1036 push. Uh, Tesla was perfect, was absolutely perfect. Uh, it took out the 1015, it took out the 1026, and it didn't get the 1036, it got the 1035. I guess potato, potato, but a really nice move there as well. Obviously, the value tomorrow is to the dip side and everything everything else I had to the short side never, never came close uh, to even confirming. You can see how many you can see how many stocks I had to the short side that never uh, even came close to confirming. 1026 next stop, uh, 223.86 next supply and traded right to 223.70s. Uh, Tesla 1036 next stop, 1035. Um, and that was it. Oh, and congratulations, guys. Con again, congratulations for all you guys. Uh, congratulations for all you guys who did have, uh, who traded either have puts into the close uh, or traded after hours. But here's the big pivot, 333, 330s me, the big area of support. Obviously, that was the sell kill zone and they were coming in for the buyers, 307.50 uh, ahead of the close. So hopefully everybody did well. Uh, again, guys, remember, it's all about research. It's all about having an opinion and having that opinion play out. We're gonna be wrong every day, right? Sometimes the market doesn't go uh, in your direction, but that's fine. This is where you always play devil's advocate. This is why you trade uh, both sides of the market. At the end of the day, it's not being right, it's being prudent. Guys, have a great day. God bless everybody, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care. Have a